This morning, I will be bringing a word from the Lord, which is entitled 2010 to 2020, my decade of the extinction of honor and of glory. 2010 to 2020, my decade of distinction, of honor, and of glory. Our Heavenly Father, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the Lord who spoke your word into existence and then spoke everything to life. This morning, this day, we pray that your power will come upon us in a new way. We pray that your fresh anointing will come upon us in a new way. We pray that your glory will come upon us in a new way. We pray, Lord, that we will receive from you. Lord, we will be changed by you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And as we always say in this church, out of the broken pieces of your past, God can build an edifice of hope. This morning, I'm not going to be giving a classical sermon, but I'm going to be encouraging you. I'm going to be stirring up your faith. I'm going to be inspiring you to think of the next 10 years. I'm going to, first of all, ask a very simple question. Why you must think, not just only for today, but have a long view of your life. And I'm going to give you seven things that I will, make, I will suggest to you that will guide you as you look at the next 10 years of your life and daring beyond. If you turn with me to the book of Romans chapter 2, Verse 7. Let's start from verse 6. And Paul says something here. He says, God will give to each person according to what he has done. God will give to each person according to what he has done. To those who by persistence in doing good Seek glory, seek honor, and immortality. He will also give eternal life. God will give to each person. The word here, each person, means that God will be specific. God will be very individualistic. God will look at people one by one, not as families, not as churches, not as groups. Especially for those who seek for glory, who seek for honor, who seek for immortality. You see, all over the Bible, we see that God is a futuristic God. Although God talks about our being concerned about today and are not getting worried about tomorrow, He's always wanted us to be people who can have a long view. The text we read about Psalm 90, verse 12, the psalmist says that God teach me to number my days, that I might have a heart of wisdom. Teach me to number my days. Now what does it mean to teach me to number my days? I'm not here to stay eternity. So God, teach me to number my days that I might apply my heart to wisdom. That every time of my life, every phase of my life, I will do what is wise and I will utilize my time for what is important. 
If you talk with me to the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, and Habakkuk is one of the prophets in the Bible. The man wrote from the first verse and said, I will stand at my watch. I will station myself on the rampart. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I will give to, to this complaint. Then the Lord said to me, write down the revelation. The word here, revelation, means write down the vision. Write down the ideas. Write down what I've told you. And make it plain on table, um, tablets. Or make it plain in the book. For the idea, the vision, the dream, the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end, and it will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. See, he is puffed up. His desires are not upright, but the righteous shall live by his faith. I want to encourage you that it's very biblical that when you set out on this world to have a roadmap. A roadmap that tells you where you are going to. A roadmap that tells you where you will become in the next 10 years. No one ever sets on a journey without having a roadmap. Enter a plane and say you are going to anywhere in the world. You're not going to be the pilot. You're not going to be the engineer, but you know for sure where you are going. And God has always wanted us to know for sure where we are going. The question I want to ask you is, how will the world around you look like in the next 10 years? What kind of a world will you desire in the next 10 years? What difference will this city have? The city you come from, your family, your home, because you lived in the next 10 years. What kind of a person will you like to be in the next 10 years? Every one of us, created by God, has been called upon to have a road map, to think. Sometimes what he tells me, I say, well, no, 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 God takes care of me. I don't need to bother about the next 10 years. I don't need to bother about the next 20 years. And I ask people, I said, what will you eat this evening? He said, I want to eat a bad this evening. I said, no, God will take care of what you eat this evening. Don't bother. Don't, just, just don't worry. As many as are led by the Spirit of God shall see food. You and I here are a recipient of the vision of people who have lived before us. Every time you take a pauper to eat, anytime you take a mango, anytime you go to the market to buy fruits, someone dreamt about it. I said, I'm going to sow a seed that will give a pauper. I'm going to sow a seed that will bring a mango. I'm going to sow a seed that will bring a vegetable. And then you, at the end of it, begin to receive it. If that man had not sown, if that man had not dreamt, if that man had not felt that this will happen, you and I will continually be gopping in the now. There is no single thing that God does that he doesn't, speak, he doesn't make a prophetic declaration. In fact, all over the Bible, the prophets are the highest. And in the New Testament, the prophets are only secondary to the apostles. And what the prophets does is to see beyond and declare it. They see what is going to happen and they declare it. And they said, this is exactly what is going to happen. And the prophets remind us that the way God looks is this. God sees the end from the beginning. God is the master planner. 
He sees the whole end of everything and he visualizes it what? Right from the beginning. When God called man and created man, he visualized the end of man. He saw what he expected man to become, what he wanted man to do. And then he says, go replenish the earth. Subdue it. And I want to tell you that when God was saying that to man, God was imagining that in another 10, 20 years, what will happen to the world? There will be plants. There will be fruits. There will be vegetables. There will be roads. There will be empires and buildings. You know? There will be plains. But God had already visualized it. God had already seen it. Right from the beginning. What he does not visualize, what he does not see, doesn't happen. 